Hi folks, Scott here, and this is the wrap for Tuesday, July 30th. So um, another sort of quiet day here. We're a day ahead of Fed Day, and I'll certainly show the historic results for fading gaps day uh, on the day of Fed Day uh, tomorrow morning for our members. Uh, in fact, it'll show up in our worksheet tonight. You'll see the data for that uh, posted around 6 p.m. Eastern Time. But I thought what would be helpful going into tomorrow would be to show you another pattern that'll be in a worksheet, but without... Uh, the Fed day constraint. And what I mean by that is that tomorrow is also the last trading day of the month. And that tends to be a fairly important day. And I've shown in the past that the whole concept of window dressing is probably not what you may believe and what you may have heard elsewhere. Often you can short, not always, but you can often short and have a good setup on um, up gaps on the last trading day of the month. But on Fed Day, I will not hold a gap trade or any trade, range trade either, or discretionary, through the announcement. Tomorrow, I believe it's at uh, 2.15 or 2.30 Eastern Time. So that means all of my tests will be constrained with a time exit of 2 p.m. Eastern Time. Otherwise, you know, it's, it's the data is not as relevant. So I'm going to show you the results of fading gaps on the last trading day of a month, targeting gap fill, using an um, end of, or I should say, using a time and using a time stop of 2 p.m. Eastern time. So targeting gap fill, basically not using an intraday stop stop other than the 2 p.m. Eastern time time stop. And there you go. Shorting up gaps is still an attractive thing to do historically on the last trade day of the month, even if you have to close it out by 2 p.m. Eastern time. And down gaps aren't bad either. Uh, win rate's just normal. When I apply an intraday stop, rerun these numbers and apply an intraday stop in the morning, that both those win rates will come down. Uh, and profitability may be affected as well. But at least on the surface, it appears uh, may have an okay setup in either direction tomorrow, especially if we gap up. Now, with all that said, Fed Day is notoriously risky or riskier for shorting up gaps. It really depends on just how today ends and if we finish real strongly it'll be a better setup for shorting up gaps tomorrow or an okay setup. If we finish weekly it's going to be a um, riskier setup for shorting up gaps. So I will uh, disassemble, reassemble, process all the different factors in play tomorrow morning and post my thoughts in my plan around 920 Eastern Time but there's a nugget going into tomorrow. All right. Let's uh, take a look at the worksheet today. We had sizable gaps up uh, across the board, uh, but in varied zones. We had a number. We had dojis basically in several of the markets. So some markets closed with red candlesticks, some closed with green, and some of them closed with dojis, which really made analysis pretty tricky. Uh, and I tend to shy away from trying too hard on those days because it's just too difficult and too many cross currents and too much at stake. But today, um, most indices showed that opening above the prior highs was going to be risky, and most indices did do that or opened just under. I think NASDAQ opened just under. ES opened uh, just under as well, or right at it. Just a tricky setup. Even between the high and the close is only slightly attractive. And I was tempted if we opened uh, in this area. And again, this is a summation of our eight individual gap guides. So always look at the individual guides. Won't be doing that today because I did not end up trading. I think you'll see why here. There's just too many cross currents. So the guides were a little bit neutral and too neutral for me. Um, day had a Fed day. That's okay on a whopping sample size of seven. So pretty much ignored that. It's just um, it's information though. <clears throat> After an unfilled down gap, while well, I showed you in last night's wrap, that needed to be discounted because uh, we only missed filling by two or three ticks. So this data was not nearly as good in that scenario. Historically, inside day was problematic. After a false up day, that was a positive. So we had yesterday, we closed lower, but with the green candlestick, so above the open. After a doji, problematic. Completely countered in my mind that good data for the false up day. Uh, after a 10-day movement, after down straddle, neutral. Just too many cross currents. Too hard. And that's that's not giving up. That's that's being pragmatic, right? That's throwing in the towel and, and, and uh, preserving your financial and emotional capital to trade another day or to be fresh for a setup. Uh, after the gap. And that was my plan because I was tempted. I told folks in the trading room I was tempted and the way I summed it up today was like Monday, this is not a bad setup, but certainly not clear and compelling enough for me for entering at the open in my opinion. Had a couple other data points from the video last night. Um, sizable up gaps, 
during similar scenarios, just everything was just too mixed. So I passed on it and waited for the price action, waited for the 15 minute guides and first hour guides. And the 15 minute guides came out, in fact, all the range guides, just to cut to the chase, chase were a little bit mixed with some, I would say they leaned towards favoring the high breakouts today which none of them triggered on, or well, exception of the NASDAQ, none of them triggered uh, among the other three indices, 15 minute or first hour, which is the pink and yellow lines. And on the low side, they leaned that way as well. It was clearly the better setup than the low fade, but it wasn't, again, complete and compelling enough for me. So what I did, in fact, the 15 minute low breakout triggered right here. See that little wick there below the, the pink line? Uh, so knowing that that data was generally favorable for the low breakout today, knowing that we still had gap fill below, knowing that I was on the fence on the gap trade because there were certainly some positives in play today, I did what I'll often do, which is I will reduce my position size because I'm technically day trading or intraday trading at that point if I pass on the gap. That's just harder to do in general. Um, and reduce my position size and went short one tick below the open, which is the white line. Actually, we opened above the green line, so we opened one tick above yesterday's highs. So I went short at 86 and a quarter specifically with my stop just above the highs, uh, two and three quarter point stop just above the high of the day, targeting gap fill. And um, it was a sweet trade. Didn't take much heat, took a little bit of heat, didn't take much, rolled over and caught the full gap fill. And then some actually, uh, last part was at 82, I believe. Uh, right above the 4 p.m. close. So that was a sweet trade. Now I did give back in the spirit of disclosure part of my profits because I left on a fade the fill trade. And that was probably ill-advised. Um, but when I made the decision, none of this had really happened. Uh, we were up here. I thought if we got down here, we'd likely bounce. I had some data favoring um, bounce, uh, favoring the fade the fill trade on the day to hit Fed day. So I uh, took off part of the position, left on half, went long at 82, sort of between the 4 p.m. close and the 4.15 close, which you can't really see here. Um, three point stop, and I've stopped at 79 down here. So gave back some more profits, but um, you know, that's called trading. Grew my accounts today, and that's all that really matters. And followed my plan. That's the most important thing. So that was my day, and that is the wrap for Tuesday, July 30th. Have a good one.